Okay, going with something a little bit new here today. Uh, over the weekend, I decided to just jump headlong, balls deep, whatever it is, into Warhammer 40,000 Inquisitor Martyr. And, you know, with all the great things that were coming out with Total War Warhammer 2, uh, we had the high elf gameplay video today. Uh, but I wanted to kind of just segue a little bit away from that because I know a lot of people are covering it. And there was a, there was not a whole ton for me to cover that wasn't just so evident from just watching it. So I want to do something a little bit different for especially some of the people that have been subscribed for watching Dawn of War 3 or stuff like that. So I want to go into today, uh, Warhammer 40,000 Martyr. It should be about a 10-15 minute video. I'm going to show you guys the Assassin and the Crusader classes as well as the different options. And then we'll play through one quick mission just to give you guys an idea for the gameplay. And I'll talk about my just kind of first impressions, general idea of the... Uh, of the game, I'm really enjoying it so far, so let's just kind of dig right in here. So, start with the Assassin, so. Before becoming an Inquisitor, you serve the Imperium as a death cult Assassin, a specialist of deceit who expresses her worship through death. Death cults can be found on many Imperial worlds, paying their tithe to the Emperor with the calling of heretics, traitors, and other enemies of mankind. So, you've got this character that's a little bit more of like a almost like a fast attack type rogue character uh, inquisitors with a death cult background are deadly assassins experts in hit and run tactics and exotic weapons in combat they rely on their acrobatic skills and speed thus preferring lighter armor and weapons um, in the tabletop there's a bunch of different types of assassins you've got your Kaladis assassin um, there's a whole bunch of, a, uh, of them I really can't remember a ton off the top of my head but basically you've got one that's more of a sniper you've got one that uses more psyops like a psyker type abilities you've got one that's actually more like close combat subterfuge so what you can do here is you can choose kind of like that you can choose your infiltrator which is your more dual wielding type your sniper which is obviously range and your eradicator which is a shotgun and sniper rifle as well so this one's a little bit more of like a sweeper type class uh, used more to uh, kind of get up close and personal but also stay at range so um, this one uses the auto pistol so clearly more of a sniping but if something gets in range you can use your auto pistol but by by no means is the pistol any weak in, is, is weak in this game at all it's really cool and fun but you've got your three variants here death cult blades and assassin power swords this was this one um, when you choose one of these expertise it unlocks one of three skill trees automatically those skill trees are locked to you until you complete a certain amount of um, I guess you could say a milestone that correlates with that skill tree for instance Crusader has one of three expertises, which we're about to get into, and I chose the one that was more like a rifle. But in order to unlock the melee abilities, I have to do 50,000 damage with melee weapons. So you're not shoehorned or pigeonholed, whatever it is, into being one of these expertises. It just unlocks that specific expertise tech tree for you to go into. And we'll take a look at those in a little bit. Uh, there is the Psyker class, which we cannot see just yet. Uh, because keep in mind, and huge disclaimer here, guys, huge disclaimer. This is pretty much an alpha build. If you purchase this game, you're supporting the people that create it, and you're helping them debug and create this game even further. From my initial impressions, I think it's amazing, and it's going to be even better when it's really fleshed out. But huge disclaimer, because this is, game is not yet completed. Can't stress that enough. Take a look at the Crusader, though. Obviously, I went with the fucking Crusader. Look at this bastard. But before rising to the rank of Inquisitor, you served as a Crusader, the holy warrior of the Adeptus Ministorum. Crusaders display their devotion to the Emperor as an honor guard or as executioners, and such is the zeal of their chapters that it makes them ideal recruits for the Inquisition. Inquisitors with the Crusader background are fearsome warriors using heavy armor and weaponry. On the battlefield, they relentlessly march through fire like the legendary juggernauts of the old Terran myths. They are the slowest of the three agent archetypes, trading mobility for the protection and firepower. Um, and I, I unfortunately haven't played an assassin, so I don't really know too much about these trait abilities, unfortunately, so I can't elaborate on them. But with the Crusader, Crusader, you have this uh, focus resource, which is basically your ability. You, you're, it's like a, it's almost like a mana pool that regenerates as you get into close, as you do damage as people hit you depends on what your focus is going to be so crusaders must spend focus points to operate power armor and heavy weapon skills so this armor as you can see this is assault armor on the juggernaut that assault armor is like a jump pack the assault gunner has got sentinel armor which allows him to drop a little sentinel that shoots at things with, with uh, two heavy bolters on it just rips things up 
than the heavy weapons guy. Um, he's got this basically this demol this demolition armor, and on the back, those things are basically like a like a Hellfire po uh, missile pod. They just shoot a shit ton of missiles. So focus is a resource that you use to to access those those abilities. So they are melee specialists, and they do have access to power armor, as you can clearly see. So if you haven't garnered yet, heavy weapons team is is dedicated to las guns and shotguns with these two missile pods on their back. The assault gunner uses dual wielding pistols, like las pistols are well auto guns as a rifle, but this guy is more focused on um, area effect abilities. That's what, that's the first tree that's on that's available for him. And there's the juggernaut here, which has got chainsaw, great sword, and suppression shield. And those are just the the weapons that you start off with. As you level up, you unlock more. You can get the plasma rifle. You can get um, the grav gun. So all those of you that are familiar with 440,000 weaponry and and then the such, you get access to those as you level up. Like I think my guy's using a, a great axe. So, we see here, you know, Juggernaut, Chainsword, Greatsword, everything like that, Assault Armor. I went with the Heavy Weapons guy to start with, I believe. I can't really remember 100%. Yeah, I think so. But let's actually jump onto my character. Of course, he's bald. Just like me. And we'll, we'll play through a quick mission here. Nothing too crazy, nothing too insane, but I want to give you guys a real good sense for how this game plays. Oh yeah, cool. So, I right before I went to sleep last night, I crafted this new implant. Go ahead and claim. And this is your inventory. And it's pretty basic right now. Everything's still in the works. But you have a power rating, which is kind of like your kind of like your item level. If you for those of you that are familiar with a lot of MMOs or those of you that are familiar with um, maybe Diablo 3, it's kind of your your basically your combined ability, your power rating. Your shows the total power of your items, determines difficulty by comparing to mission mission challenge rating, increased by equipping stronger items. So if we go over to Equipment. You can see my main implant. It compares obviously the equipped one versus the inspected one. And it shows us, I, I can't lock this unfortunately, but right below item level on the lower left corner above cell value, we have plus 10 quality. That little fist that says it's a main implant, rare implant to the right of that, there's a fist um, that says 18. That's the quality rating, uh, more or less. As, I, I've, uh, as I've learned to understand, I'm still kind of on the fence about some things. But we'll right click that, pop that into place. And every single thing here has got basically add-ons for it. So you've got your main implant. Your main implant is then um, complemented by a neural implant and an eye implant. You've got your uh, salt armor here, which is complemented by grenades and purity seals. Really, a little purity seal right there. Um, I went with these uh, cool new uh, grenades that are on a fused time delay. You start off with frag grenades. And you've got this ink inoculator. And the inoculator can give you either a direct shot of health or it can boost your damage. You can choose what it does. Those two little icons right there, I've chosen it to double up health. So I wanted it to be a healing based inoculator, but you can have one that's more of a DPS base if you're playing with a team more often. So you get to really choose. Um, then you've got, I'm, right, I'm using a LAS gun right now, so that takes up both slots. And we've got the rare signums in each one of these things. They're imbued onto the side of the gun right there. And I've also got, this fancy great axe. So, a uh, quick thing to note, I can't really use a, a full example, but there's gray items that are common, right there, as a common purity seal. Then you've got master crafted, which is blue, which is the step up. Then you've got green, rare implants. Then you've got purple, boom, artificiers. So, the, the relic, I believe is what it's called in this game. So, that's your progression. I think there is further down the line going to be some set items and maybe an orange, who knows what that's going to be like, but this is what's in the game right now. And I've plopped a Mastercrafted Signum and a Rare Signum on this Great Axe, making it so I do quite a bit of damage. Um, another cool thing though here is, so we've got Las Guns, and this shows me the four abilities that the Las Guns going to have. Um, one of them's a straight shot, one of them's a, like a quick rapid fire, one's more of like a headshot, and one's more of a direct beam that'll shoot through things we'll see in a little bit. But if I look here, I got a Bolt Pistol and a last pistol so you can dual wield pistols on this game um, there's bolt pistols there's auto pistols which are basically like smgs if you want to think of them like that and the auto gun is more or less like a like a typical conventional assault rifle from our age you know twenty thousand years in the past but um oh wait a minute 20 million years whatever the hell it is millenniums centuries all the same thing right so but if you notice here 
if I dual wield these weapons, I can only use the first two of each. If I show that off. But if I only wear one, some things are still a little shaky here, so I'm going to say. Only wear one, I can use all four. So you can wear a shield and stuff like that. The great sword's obviously a two-handed weapon, so is the great axe, but you can use a chain axe or a power, I'm sorry, a chain sword or a power sword or a uh, power axe. <laughs> That's the only thing I couldn't think of. Uh, with your shield, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to just pop back on that last gun because it has the highest quality. As you can see, these things kind of different quality. I'm not a huge fan of the heavy flamer. I know a lot of people are. But the heavy flamer can like lob a big ball of fire. It can shoot in a straight line. Although as I look at this thing, it gives like plus four, or I'm sorry, plus six percent chance of critical hit. It's pretty damn good. But I want to show off the uh, the last gun. It's pretty cool. So let's do a mission, shall we? So not everything's fleshed out again. So this thing is this placeholder story mission. The story missions haven't been added into the game. And as you can see, alpha build. Um, once they're get added into the game, they'll clearly be right there. But you can see from the star map, you can choose, okay, this one, I can see these things are way below my power level. This one's way below my power level. But I click here, and I have a pretty good idea of what I can do. Premium missions, priority assignments, placeholder for my next mission, and different things level you up in different ways. So we've got your account level, as you can see here. Uh, basic experience progression, level and skill, increased by single missions and priority assignments. Then you've got your actual level of your character. Determines item progression. Levels unlock item types and increase power rating of reward items. Increased by campaign, placeholder premium for now, and tarot missions. I'll show you tarot real quick. You can click this button, Uther's Tarot, and this is what we're actually going to do today. I think it'll be pretty fun. I can choose one of these uh, cards from the from the uh, Emperor's Tarot. And the Emperor's Tarot is basically exactly what we would expect. It's a tarot card. So it's what they, what psychers and diviners use to kind of uh, tell the future in, in the way that's kind of divined through the Emperor's will and stuff like that. The kind of uh, weird occultism that, that happens in certain esoteric portions of the Imperium. But each one of these has different bonuses. So Trader, uh, Effect, Premium missions will be limited to renegade and chaos type opponents. Reward, increased chance to find armor, purity seals, and inoculators. So when I click one of these, it's gonna cost 90 fate, which is an, a, a currency, right there, right there. And it's gonna have the effect of giving me, okay, I'm either gonna be renegade or chaos type opponents, and but I'm gonna have a higher chance to find armor, purity seals, inoculator, all the such, all the goodies. I believe last time I did, this one. Increased chance to find rifles. Premium missions will be limited to Nurgle type opponents. Right now in the game, there's only Renegade, Chaos, Nurgle, and I believe Rebel. Um, I haven't seen Spoils of War missions. And I haven't seen Assassination missions. Or Purge. I'm still kind of new to it, but they're a Rebel type, that's the other type. There's only, clearly it's Rebel, Rebel, um, I'm sorry, Rebel uh, Guardsmen. Chaos or Renegade chaos cultists and mutants and chaos actual space marines and you've got nurgle nurgle space marines uh plague bearers all sorts of nurgle creatures um, all including some renegade cultists and the such but let's actually i could use some armor and i think it'd be cool to show off some uh, space marines let's do this one and it'll randomly generate some minor arcana for me so this one means oh i can't die okay all right. Oh, it doesn't show me the other one. I'm not sure what the other one was. That Grim Reaper means I cannot die in the mission. Okay, here we go. Effect. There's a medium chance that regular and champion enemies spawn a demon upon their death. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. this could get dicey. So a sudden warps, and this is kind of the big part is reading these little background blurbs. Because the game is so, um, you know, bare bones right now. I mean, this would all be narrated otherwise. There would be a lot more going on here. Um, I read these to kind of help bring me into the game. So, a sudden warp surge has split the veil of reality and has spoiled a Chaos Marine warband here. After an orgy of violence and bloodshed, the traitorous fiends have voxed out challenging broadcasts, demanding Imperial servants match matching them in combat. Orders exterminate this filth at once. Destroy several warp gates that spawn Chaos Marine forces from the Immaterium. 
press start here, we can see my rewards, or get some credits, get some rank points, get some glory. Let's fuck some shit up. And you can switch quickly between items here. The There's no set tutorial yet, because again, still an alpha build, so... But you do warp in. Warping is pretty, uh... The agents technology. of the ruinous powers created warp rifts in the area. We have to seal these gates, or we will face a demonic incursion, and we're both aware of the consequences. And keep in mind, of course, that will be fleshed out a little bit more in the final build. Some don't even actually have voice acting to him. They just kind of have, uh, I want to turn this down just a little bit. Um, they actually just have the, uh, oh, that was music. The music would fucking pump it up. I guess we'll do this. Um, some don't actually have voice acting, just the text. But you get a pretty good sense for, like, the weight of power armor in this, and I fucking love that. Like, this guy's not just, like, sprinting across the battlefield like it's, like it's nothing. You can actually see him moving around slowly, cumbersomely, and depending on what I'm using, he'll move quicker. Heavy weapons, he moves much slower, like the, uh, like the uh, heavy flamer. So, if I, you see this little thing that's popping up on the ground here, that's the indicator of cover. Press space, I'm in cover right now. There'll be a little health bar that'll appear right here that is the health of the cover itself. Hey, guy. Take pot shots, you can see, just all sorts of good lore. And you can hold down right click. Do a little burst fire here. But you can also press one headshot. And then for those of you who played Diablo 3 and you're familiar with the uh, wizard. <laughs> Let's see here. We've got to go maze. We'll go like this. That looks good. Oh, first, I'll show you how this jump pack works. Fuck these sons up. You've got one of these clean attack, like a clone attack in front of you. A little charge and a that actually knocks his armor down. Whirlwind. So if I get right here though, I'm in cover. That was rude. Throw grenades like this. Those are quite a bit of damage. Some of the animations are still kind of blocky right now as, as things kind of get figured out. But I'm. It, it seems very slow paced and rudimentary right now, but I think that. As soon as we hit more of like an, a beta stage, this game is going to be pretty fucking titsies, which is a, a term I'm going to use right now. So supplies and medical supplies, these are my supplies. As you can see, fuse, delayed uh, grenade, long range, explosive. And these are my medical supplies. This is the inoculator we were talking about. So the coagulant restores 20% of max HP per second for five seconds. That's just your standard chest. So I got a plasma pistol though, and some uh, crafting materials. Oh yes, precious. You give me that ass. Mm. I'll spin that meter on the left in just a second. And I'm a little bit higher than this than this power level, so it's a little bit easier for me. That's kind of that nice. Was it the right way? Yeah, it was good. Um, this is kind of interesting. I think I've got to kind of tweak the camera to follow, follow your back a little bit more right now. But pretty cool so far. It's entirely destructible environment too, so that's kind of nice. So watch this. Okay. <laughs> oh, what the hell is that? I don't know what that does. I've never done that. Guys, what the fuck? So, if you look in my lower left corner, you can see... Um, that little gauge, the green bar, and then followed by uh, yellow and then red. That's my suppression gauge. If that starts to go down, I'll move slower as I'm suppressed. I'll do less damage. So you want to stay, you want to move from cover to cover, or be in a position with a shield or something of the sort where you don't get suppressed. So fuck your demon. I think right now only Nurgle demons are in the game. No corn or Zinch or Slanesh yet. Oh, but I was saying uh, fully destructible environment, so. Poor example. Poor example. 
horror example. You, you just wait. There's things that blow up, and those will show you the real destructiveness. But cover actually takes, like, real-time damage, as you can see. Which is kind of cool, I think, as, it, as its health goes down, which is nifty. I love the, like, the true... I, I wish I could pan up to show you the statue. Like, the true aesthetic of, like, what makes this very much like... Uh, a I'm sorry, not a heretic, a... Uh, an Inquisitor going through the dregs, just slaying through things in the name of the Emperor. And, like, that's kind of the cool thing about the Inquisitors. They work very much autonomously with a small retinue. And that's not been added in the game. You can get a retinue, but... Um, like a small, you know, cadre of followers that are specialized in certain things. Maybe some specialize in psych error or abilities or some specialize in close combat. Depends on how you'd want to be as an Inquisitor yourself. And in the lore, these Inquisitors, they go from planet to planet kind of rooting out chaos. And you do the same thing here. You have multi-part missions that have to, that, that allow you kind of to not choose your own adventure, but you, they say, like, okay, there's one of three things you can do. You've got guardsmen that are uh, worshipping... Uh, a chaos idol, or you've got a special ops team that is that is stuck behind enemy lines fighting cultists. Well, who do you go save? And that kind of dictates what kind of collateral damage is done to the planet and stuff like that. It's very, it's it's less of just like a, oh, this is an action RPG. It's kind of a little bit more cerebral. What kind of, um, what kind of uh, what the hell is this guy called? What kind of inquisitor do you want to be? Fuck shit up with this, this axe of doom here. But it's really cool, like the Inquisitor has, depending on which book you're reading, really. Um, press the inoculator, and that'll restore my health quite quick. The gate is closing, but reality is still bleeding into the wall. Look at you. Look at you. I don't, I hate the word bearers. They're such assholes in the horse heresy. Like, the the horse, the horse heresy didn't need to happen if it wasn't for Erebus and the rest of the damn word bearers. Oh, God. I can't stress enough how much I hate Erebus. Um, if you don't know who he is, I'm sorry. He's like the, he's like the very first heretic, basically. Um, okay. So, in the lore, though, the, these Inquisitors, they have got this, uh, either a tattoo or a brand of the Inquisition. The Inquisition is that, uh, let me see if it's actually, oh, I can't. Looks like I can't bring up I to take a look, but we saw that big I, literally the the, the numer the uh, the letter I, um, that stands for the Inquisition with the skull in it, and, like kind of the wings on it. This stands for the Mechanicum. Um, they have that branded on themselves. Oh yeah, look at this guy, dude, just this big daddy. Yeah, kill streak. Um, and they can go. It pretty much gives them like the ability to do whatever the hell they want, because no one's going to mess with an Inquisitor. Because an Inquisitor only simply needs to say, oh, you're a heretic, and you, you go off to some hellhole to be interrogated. So kind of, it, it, I mean, it takes its roots from the Spanish Inquisition, obviously, but that's why no one really wants to mess with the Inquisition. No one really expects, at the same time, the Inquisition. <laughs> giggity, giggity. I just got the Great Axe and I, I just love it. I was using a great sword before. Great axe is where it's at. Loop of Doom. And I just started using assault armor. I was using sentinel armor to deploy these uh, these twin linked heavy bolter cannons, which are really cool. But I got more use out of this uh, this ability to just kind of leap into things like this. Like, look at that. Just clears the way. Clears the way. And you can see I'm suppressed right now, so I'm moving a little bit slower. My resistance is lower. I, I re also regenerate health slower when I'm suppressed, and depending on which variation of suppressed I'm at, too. Like, you sometimes won't even regenerate it if you're all the way completely suppressed, and overwhelmed is what it'll actually mark you as. More supplies. Yeah, basically, like, there's a lot of books where Inquisitors are, are being led into places they shouldn't be and stuff like that. They're like, hey, who the hell are you? They show the brand, and it's like, oh, never mind, sir, we're right this way, please. Do that, by the way. But, as you can see, it's still kind of wonky with some animations, but it's doable. And in true, if you guys have never beta tested or alpha tested before, this is true to form. Things are a little bit, you know, kind of a skeleton build here right now. We've got a little bit less actual emphasis on um, the uh, 
the glamorous portion of gameplay and more just the strict gameplay elements here. Ooh, look at that big group of people. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Come for Papa. Mm, tastes good. I've noticed that the, the higher the creature I kill, the more the, the tougher the demon that comes out. See, so you can see I was overwhelmed there for a second. Uh -oh. Escape! Well, my MOBA days, you know, using those uh, using those abilities that would do damage to you get me out of a tough situation. An inoculator. These guys are actually, for having just stub, stub guns, or stubbers, or heavy stubbers, or whatever they're called, um, they do quite a bit of damage. Get up in his face. Boom! There it is. If you just press 1, it won't work. It will be off for 1 you have targeted. So, if I have this targeted and press 1, it'll walk 2, and then use the ability. I mean, I play a lot of Diablo 3, so I'm used to it just kind of going off. everything off here. Bit of a completionist. Yeah, crush them fools. You can see on the map where there's uh, little tests here and there. Heavy flame reaction. Alright. That concludes this. We'll show you the, the post kind of battle screen here. That symbol right there was the symbol for the Inquisition. All right, so you get these chests every time you complete one. Uh oh, we got a nice, nice. We got an account level. Pop this open. So we also got some items up here. We can see that we looted during the during the fight. Ooh, okay. So grand rewards are your rares. Precious gifts are your relics. So we got a relic sentinel armor, which I'm very stoked on. I love the sentinel armor. We also got another great axe, which I've already got, which is great. Another purity seal as well. And uh, get some artificier armor. That's the one that shoots the, the missiles down. And the flash grenade. Press continue. And I think, yeah, got another level. So you also get one of these every time you level up. And it shows you what you get access to. For those who seek perfection, there can be no rest this side of the grave. The skill tree unlocked. Magos Biologist Secrets. I don't know what the hell that is. But I unlocked the Power Axe and Personal Void Shield. Personal Void Shield clearly must uh, offer me a small Personal Void Shield. And the uh, power axe is a one-handed power axe. So that can be used in conjunction with a shield. The signum, we got another main implant. A lot of goodies there. Let's take a look real quick at that armor. It's probably pretty damn cool. Equipment. We'll jump on over to the Sentinel armor. Yes, yeah, so you can see the Sentinel armor's got a little bit more like cloak to it, less crazy of a helmet. The demolition armor's a lot heavier looking, kind of usually has a cape or a drape to it. These big old muscle pods, and then the assault armor. As you can see, is real serious heavy duty. Here's another. Here's another. Um, what is this? This one's Sentinel armor here. Here's another Sentinel armor. Each one is kind of different in its own right. Some are a little bit more similar, but I'm a huge fan of the assault armor right now. Got a cool purity seal. They all have you know different abilities with different roles on them, so you kind of decide how you want to play your character. Like I've got one of these signums that does. Um, maybe it's. I think I used to have it. Maybe I don't have it anymore. One that does increased damage, increased heat damage. So that would be uh, plus four, plus five point four percent heat damage and suppression damage. So that would be really good when I was using my maybe flamers, wherever the hell my big one is. This one's my big one. So you can really kind of cater these your your gameplay however you want. You can get these builds that would kind of fit into it. Like I can, I think I can do this and this. Yeah. So you, so you can have kind of like that. Oh, nice. <laughs> you can have more of that. Uh, Almost like a space wolf feel to the character if you want to do that. There we go. A bolt pistol and a power axe or, or a chain axe or a chain sword. More of a space wolf. Whatever kind of design or, or play you want to do. But 
that kind of squares everything off here today, guys. Oh, you can also just show this off real quick. You can craft things. You can salvage things just like you can in most uh, um, action RPGs nowadays. But you can click like crafting and you can get these recipes from the uh, shop. I'll show you in a second. But you pretty much would just go, okay, right click for that one. These blessed alloys are right here. It's chemical reagents right there. And I would just press craft. That will take an hour to craft real time, unfortunately. But if I go here, I can sell my items, I can buy items, equipment, add-ons, miscellaneous as well, and also grab gun mark two. So you have different blueprints in here as well. Lastly, you have the ability for P PvP, co-op, and uh, uh, sorry, co-op and multiplayer. Jesus, co-op and PvP multiplayer. Ugh. And this is what allows you to swap out the uh, buffs in your the components in your inoculator. And uh, as you do it, it tells you, you know, this is the use case and this is the total capacity. So if we, it does a good way of describing it over here. Well, there it is. The actual number of uses for the inoculator during missions, determined by dividing the total capacity with the cost per charge value. So the total capacity, 12, cost per value, two, so six. And that obviously goes up as you pick up more medical supplies. I mean, as you can see here, the uh, retinue placeholder right there, that'll eventually come into the game. Uh, we have a little storage over here, but uh, I, all in all, guys, I think it's a great game. I'm really excited for what uh, is to come with this. Uh, so far, I love it. Um, I'm sorry if it's a little choppy and weird because it is kind of like a, an alpha build. So it looks like, as I watch the playback, it looks a little funky right now. But um, if if you have the money and you and you, and you want to support a, a really cool, um, I guess you could say company looking to do something, I would go for it. Um, I would not shy away from this. I didn't. Just so you guys know, I wasn't giving this for free. I bought the shit out of it. <laughs> and I'm really stoked on it. So anyone that's asked me about it, I'm like, dude, do it. But again, if you want to wait a little bit, it is an early access. So it's not like that's going to go away anytime soon. You've got all the time in the world. You could wait a couple months. I'm going to put another video up, I'm sure. So you've got plenty of time if you want to see how this game fleshes out. I know there's a couple other people that are that are covering this game as well, like Chapter Master uh, Volric, Valric, or something like that. Um, that's actually who I saw the game on his YouTube channel originally. Then I was like, oh, I'll go check it out. And I saw it was an early access. But hopefully you enjoyed this this video today here, guys. Something a little bit different. Want to just kind of mix it up before I dive deeper into some of the uh, the uh, the elf pantheon that I'm going to be doing next here. And uh, hopefully some uh, some more quick battles. But thanks for watching here today, guys. Have a good one and take care.